Hello, CA football fans. I'm Zach Burris, obviously not Bobby Burles, joined here by Tim McDonald as we bring you the latest edition of This Week in CA Football. And we've, we finally get to the thick of the FCS playoffs, and where's Bobby B? He's off floating around in the tropics. At least we got us to carry the show this week. Exactly. And while Bobby's getting some sun, here at CA headquarters, we're getting set for this weekend's quarterfinal action. Tim, we've got two teams, mm -hmm. Towson and New Hampshire, still alive in the hunt for that title. Well, let's go back to Saturday's second round and see how the Tigers and Wildcats were able to advance. We'll begin at United Stadium, where Towson utilized a strong second half to overcome Fordham. A strong second half indeed. The Tigers really looked to their quarterback, Peter Athens, the fifth-year senior, Zach. He got it done. They outscored Fordham 27-7 to in the second half. Athens arguably had one of his best games of his career, 13 for 15, 301 yards and three touchdowns. I looked to the second half. This team is so strong in the second half, and it, they proved it against the Rams. Huge drives that lasted four plus minutes to end the third quarter, and then they had another drive early in the fourth. I think that really did it. Look at Terrence West, he didn't have 100 yards, which was a shock to see, but he scored three touchdowns now as 34 total on the year. And Towson also went to their freshman, Darius Victor, CA Rookie of the Year, 105 yards rushing, that's a career high, also had a touchdown. And Dessenberg, the wide receiver, the freshman, he stepped up 94 yards and a touchdown. Dangerous defense. What they did, Towson, to that Fordham team, 32 yards rushing. Yes, they gave up a lot of passing yards. That was expected. But to hold Fordham to 28 points and get the win, huge victory. First playoff victory in Towson history. In Saturday's other showdown, Maine and New Hampshire met for the second time in 15 days. No musket in this one as the prize was a trip to the quarterfinals. This matchup was closer than the regular season finale, but the Wildcats pulled away down the stretch. And I think, you know, you looked at that game, first started out with some fireworks. We saw Maine, you know, retake the lead. It was, they were up 7-3 to three following an 88-yard kickoff return by DeMar Altman. Maine and that crowd in Orono is rocking. Sean Goldrich, though, steps up, has a 57-yard touchdown to Justin Mello. Then he has another 48-yarder to Jimmy G and Sante. Ultimately, those big plays paid off, and Goldrich throughout the game was a little bit more consistent. A career high for him, 291 yards and three touchdowns. Look at the way New Hampshire gets it done. We talk about balance with this team. They got it done in the second half. Chris Sedian has two huge fourth quarter touchdowns. And New Hampshire, that ground game kept Maine honest. They had some crazy formations. Some things worked for them. New Hampshire gets it done. Not easy to beat Jack Cosgrove twice in a season. Very hard thing to do, and New Hampshire got it done. More importantly, Maine, I think the issue for them, again, was third down. They were 3 of 13. New Hampshire gets it done on the road, and they're still alive. Good assessment. And clearly one conference team had to lose here, but you certainly have to give our Coach of the Year, Jack Cosgrove, and NCAA football champion, Black Bears, credit for one heck of a season. Mm. And with nearly 8,000 folks at Alphon on Saturday, not a bad crowd on there to all. catch the team's first FCS playoff home game there either. Well, with both teams now set for the quarterfinals, let's first focus on Friday night, where Towson takes on Eastern Illinois and Charleston. Get your popcorn ready, Tim. This one kicks <laughs> at 8 o'clock on ESPN2. Yeah, primetime national audience. The lights are on. Turn up or go home. That's what mm -hmm. we say. And it's funny, these two players, you know, you mentioned the Walter Payton. That's the, the best player in the FCS. That's the award. They're going to meet next, when, next Monday in Philly, Terrence West of Towson and Jimmy Garoppolo of Eastern Illinois. They're going to lead the way, and they're going to headline this. You know, offensively, this is a game where you want to look at this and say, it's EIU's passing attack versus the Towson run game. You know, EIU, Jimmy Garoppolo, we mentioned, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. He's thrown for 51 touchdowns this year, which I don't know how that's possible. On the other hand, Terrence West, he's rushed for 33 touchdowns. That doesn't seem possible either. I think it's going to be the physical ground attack of Towson versus that pass attack. You know, EIU, one of the best offenses in the nation. 48 points per game, almost 600 yards per game. Also have an All-American wide receiver in Eric Laura. Don't, 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 get too, don't read too much into that. Towson's pretty good, too. 232 rushing yards, that's third in the FCS. 44 rushing touchdowns this season, okay? I think it's going to be West. He needs to get on track. He's, he, sh he should get on track. 150 yards per game. That leads the FCS. More importantly, you know, people are talking Towson. Oh, yes, they're seated, and they have to go face EIA. What has Towson done on the road? They've won every single game that they've played. 7-0 and this year. Peter Athens, if they have to look for him, you know, we thought maybe that would be a weakness for this team. Last week he proved if they shut down the run game or if something works out, Athens can beat you with his arm. I think that's going to be the key for this Towson team. And interesting, Tim, that so much attention is centered on each team's offense. Mm -hmm. When on Monday's call we heard Tigers coach Rob Ambrose talk about how the outcome of this game could be dictated by the play on the other side of the ball. And, you know, it's interesting because we, we do, and uh, everyone's guilty of it. We talk about Terrence West and this offense, and, you know, you look at Towson's defense, they haven't been too shabby this year either. You know, uh, some guys, I, I think Towson has the advantage phys on, on the physical side. They're such a physical team up front, especially on the line of scrimmage. If they can get pressure on Garoppolo, I think that's going to be huge. Need to force turnovers. That's huge in the playoffs. Last week they forced three. They actually rank near the top of the FCS in, in rush defense, 111 yards per game. 
Fordham only had 32 last week, like we mentioned. I think that's going to be key. Can you take the run game away from EIU? That's going to be huge because EIU, we know they're going to rely on the pass. If they can shut down that run game or at least force it to be not, not so present, I think that's going to be a huge factor. And I think the tempo. You know, Dino Babbers, the head coach of Eastern Illinois, he comes from Baylor, and we, we've seen what Baylor can do at the FBS level. We know Baylor's all about tempo, and we know this EIU team's all about tempo. Towson averages a little uh, four-plus minutes better than EIU in time of possession. That's going to be key. Can Towson sustain drives and keep the ball away from EIU, those athletic receivers? I think Towson owns the physical matchups. EIU maybe has a little bit more speed. If Towson can control the ball and keep it out of their hands, that's going to be huge Friday night. Very big. In our second quarterfinal contest, New Hampshire also hits the road when the Wildcats head to Hammond on Saturday at 7 o'clock to face Southeastern Louisiana on ESPN3. Tim, we've got two teams here mm -hmm. in this one that started the year a little rocky. UNH at 1-3, and three, Southeastern at 1-2, and two, but both have rebounded well and are now playing some of their best ball. You know, you could argue these two teams heading into this matchup, down the stretch, these are the most dangerous teams to face, you know. We know New Hampshire around CA football. Most people know this is their 10th straight FCS appearance. A lot of people don't realize, you know, this is the first playoff postseason where they've won two games in the same tournament, okay? That, that doesn't happen for this team. We've also known that they haven't gotten past the quarterfinals. This is the first time, though, that it's really looking like that this could be the year to possibly get over that hump. A little bit of ir irony here is Southeastern quarterback Brian Bennett has a little bit of history with UNH in some sense. Chip Kelly, the current Eagles head coach, he was at Oregon when Brian Bennett was at Oregon. He recruited him. He played with him. He actually played in 2012 and 2011. So I think, I think Sean McDonald mentioned this week that he did actually call Coach Kelly and you know try to get a little bit of inside inf information. Southeastern's a team out of the Southland Conference. Like New Hampshire, had to beat a conference foe in the playoffs last week. They beat Sam Houston State. They had a huge drive, 85 yards with a minute 15 left to win the game last week. And That's the Sam Houston State team who's been to the championship the last two years. They were the national runner-up. It's going to be a challenge, but it's something New Hampshire, you know, they've gotten used to. I don't think going on the road for them in the playoffs is anything that they can't overcome. They've had to do it in the past. They've gone to Louisiana in the past, McNeese State a couple of years ago. For this New Hampshire team, you know, you try to keep the punches rolling. I don't think playing on the road should affect them. It's going to be a great matchup. As you mentioned, Tim, the Wildcats are no strangers to the road. They've had just two home playoff games mm -hmm. since 2005. Another thing we've seen from UNH this season has been the team's ability to utilize so many weapons on offense. And with this being said, Tim, the Cavs are likely to keep the Lions guessing in this one. Yeah, you know, a lot of people noticed from that main game last week that New Hampshire, formation-wise, they were a lot, you know, they had Nico Storetti in the Wildcat, they had Goldrich taking some snaps and, and also taking some handoffs. I think that's going to be key. You know, New Hampshire, you, you go into the playoffs and you always see teams with a good wide receiver or a good quarterback and they're always going together. I think New Hampshire has the ability, they have some guys, uh, Dalton Croston, Justin Mello, R.J. Harris. You know, they have some guys who they've proven that they can go to if some other guys are getting tied up on the outside or if there's some players who maybe aren't having their best game. I think that's going to be the key, getting the ball into their playmaker's hands. Chris Sedian, Nico Stretti are a bit of a one-two punch. Sedian is a little bit of a bowling ball. Nico Stretti can prove to, to have some speed on the outside. I think that's going to be key. Also, Sean Goldrich, the quarterback, you know, he's had some confidence over these last three games, especially because he's been the guy the whole time. There's no more switching with Andy Bayless. He can make some plays, too. I think we've seen that. If the pocket starts breaking down, he can run. Not always run first, but if he has to run, he can get the first down. I think that's going to be huge. And then defensively, New Hampshire, you have to keep Brian Bennett in front of you. You know, Coach McDonald's preached during this playoff stretch that New Hampshire defensively has done such a good job because they've kept plays in front of them and they've kept the players in front of them, really play just, just playing their ball, playing sound defense. You know, southeastern Louisiana comes to this game, 245 yards per game on the ground. That, that's going to be a huge factor in this. Brian Bennett, he's the quarterback. He's a great passer. Coach McDonald mentioned he could you know, be one of the best throwing quarterbacks as well, but I think it's going to be stop the run first, make him beat you with his arm. UNH had some struggles with John Robertson. We remember that game, but they still got it done and you know, ultimately forced to keep him in front a little bit. New Hampshire, like we said, I think it's going to be a tough task, Zach, but it should be a great game. Yeah, a tough task, and it's... A dual threat isn't something they haven't seen before with John Robertson, so exactly. I think they'll be plenty prepared for Brian Bennett as well. And I also want to mention, I think third down, if I may say, Zach, UNH, the last three games, all Maine, Lafayette, and, and Maine, again, a total opponents are on third down are a total of 9 for 43. That's going to be huge. And Southeastern, what do they do? They led the Southland this year in third down conversion percentage, 48.7. Keep an eye on that. That's going to be a huge factor in this game. As we mentioned, Saturday's game and Friday's Towson EIU Primetime Showdown will be broadcast nationally. We'll feature links to live stats and audio and video for both games on our game day page on cafootball.com 
And don't forget to check back with us on Sunday when we bring you our weekly rundown. And Zach, you can catch all the action this weekend on Twitter at CAA Football using the official CAFB hashtag and on Facebook at facebook.com slash CAA Football. We love responding to tweets or comments, so definitely don't hesitate when it comes to hitting us up. You can also get an inside look at the league by searching on Instagram, CAA Football, and our official Everyday Saturday blog at cafootball.wordpress.com. The CAA football crew will be back on the road this weekend. Tim and I will join the Wildcats mm -hmm. down in Hammond, while Commissioner Yeager and our man Scott Meyer will make their way to the Midwest to catch the Tigers. There's only eight teams left, Zach. Two of them are right here in CAA football. Some great opportunities to keep the season alive this weekend. Without a doubt, Tim. And I can only hope I've done Bobby a little bit of justice today. Thank you. Hopefully he'll be back here next week, so long as he hasn't floated off to sea with his little umbrella drink mm -hmm. or something. Well, thank you for filling in, Zach. And, you know, I might have to make a little call to the bullpen in the future. We'll see. I don't know. In the meantime, everyone, enjoy the games on Saturday, and we'll see you back here next week in the studio.